In the last video, we set up these blog posts to use a new blog post layout so that they actually include all the images all by default. They use our custom styling. What we want to do now is actually loop through these things live so that we don't have to manually write these here. You might remember last time inside this blog directory, we have an index.astro page and we just hard coded all of these values. Now that's not how you're supposed to do stuff in Astro because then every time you add a new blog, you have to come over here and manually type it. Plus this kind of looks nasty. So how do we actually dynamically run through or loop through all the data from our blog posts? Well, let's go ahead and get rid of all this to start with. And actually I'm gonna get rid of these ULs as well. Just so we know we're here though, I'll add blog and uh, then let's come up top here because this is where the magic is gonna happen. Capital A Astro is where we get the props from and there are a couple other options you have, a couple other methods. One of those is a dot glob. So what we can do is use a dot glob and then get all of the content from a page using that. So all I have to do is say const all posts, let's call it something like that. And I'll say await. And you might remember that this is top level await because this whole thing is technically wrapped in an async function. So I can say astro.glob and then come right inside here. And all I want to do is use a relative path to the pages. All I have to do is like this and then give it this asterisk to say anything with an MD file on it. Now, if I go ahead and I console log this and save it, this console again is going to show up in the local terminal here in VS Code. If I come down here, you can see I'm getting back a bunch of stuff. And let's see, let me scroll all the way down here. Here we go. All right, so I'm getting a front matter. I'm getting file. I'm getting URL, raw content, all this kind of stuff. Several of these things are just getters, so they can get me that content. Here's the content of the actual post. This front matter is just what I get in the front top of the markdown files. Now, if you're using MDX, you would just do MDX, and it would get you the same stuff. So I get access to a bunch of different things in here. So we can use this content to actually loop through these items and display blog posts. And to loop through these things, again, I put them in bracketed syntax, and I'll simply say all posts. And all I want to do is map over each post, and I can say for each post, I'm going to pass it to a new component we're going to call post card. It's going to be self-closing, and I'm going to pass it one thing to start with, and that is simply the post itself. Now, this doesn't exist yet, so I'm going to try to resist the urge to save come up here and add this as a new component. So we'll say post card dot astro. And inside here, we'll have some front matter. We know that this at least needs to get the post here from astro dot props. And as we saw, it's going to have a front matter property front or post dot front matter dot title so that it will display the title for the post listed out. So I'm going to save this here, come back over this way. Before I save this, I'm going to go ahead and Duplicate this, change both of these with Command D to grab both of those and do post card to Astro. This just needs to be changed then to components. And I think Astro should be happy. Let's save it and see what happens. There we go, look at that. All my titles just listed out there for me. Now let's actually style this a little bit differently. So let me come back into this postcard and actually use what we're getting in here. Now, if we're not sure, once again, let me just grab these like this. And maybe in this case, let's uh, get rid of this so we only have to look at one console log here we'll just have post card. We'll say post is equal to, in this case, all posts. And I just want the first one. We'll pass that in and that way we're just getting one. So if I come back over here and save and I open this up, scroll all the way down, this is what we're getting for each post. The front matter, the file, the URL, all this kind of stuff. Now, a lot of these things we're not gonna use because I'm not wanting to display the content of the post. I just want to display the front matter, the image, that kind of thing. Because these are just gonna be cards on the main blog page. So maybe let's change this to a pre-tag. And then let's take this front matter object here and json.stringify it. And I'll pass it null and two, and that way it formats it for us. So here we go, this is what we're getting back. That will help us as we're building this out. Now I want this to look a lot kind of like the front section of those blog posts themselves. So let's open that post header that we created last time. And actually maybe I'll just copy, let's grab all of this, because I think I'll need a lot of that. We'll add this up top here. And then I'm gonna grab all of this. We're not obviously gonna use a header tag, um, but that's okay. I'll add that down here. And you notice I don't actually have access to these at the top level because I need to destructure them from the post itself. So I'll say const, and here I've got title, date, author, image, description, and category. Now all of these are gonna come from the post. Now, if I come down this way, it looks like all my red squigglies are mostly gone. So if I save it, let's see what happens. Nope, all right, it tried. It looks like it's trying to slugify something that isn't a string. However, if I look down at category and author, those are both strings, which means I think the problem is this needs to be post.frontmatter. 
So I'll go ahead and save it, and there you see it's actually displaying. Now, obviously, this is not what I want it to look like, so it's kind of stretching everything because the styling is not meant for that. So let's go ahead and change around the styling now. I want this to be an article, and I'm going to give this the class of cart. Now, you do need to make sure that the article changes on both. I've just got VS Code set up to where it will change both at the same time. Next, I'm going to get rid of this container right here. We don't need that. And I'll save that. And I want to actually change around a couple other things. So I'm going to take the image itself. Let's get rid of this. And come up just below the small tag. And here, I actually want the image to be inside of this anchor link. Now, this href, I need to actually point somewhere. But we'll get to that in just a second. For now, I'm going to pass in this uh, image right here and change around a couple of these things. So the width here is going to be just 400 now. The height will be 250. AVIF is fine, or maybe let's say WebP just for kicks. We're going to change this to 4 over 1 and get rid of the class. Now, before we save or do anything else, let's think about this right here. Where am I going to get the URL from? If I come back over to my index page in my blog directory, you might remember that I get a bunch of things when I, when I loop through this. This post includes a URL, and it includes that front letter object that we've been using. Those are really the only two things I need from it. So rather than passing everything down here, why don't I just change this up a bit? So I'm going to change this to front matter and this to dot front matter. The other thing I want, though, is a URL. And this will be all posts. In this case, since we're still just grabbing the first thing, I just want the URL off of that. Now, it should yell at me if I save it because I don't have those things in here. So let me come over here and I'm going to change this to front matter and URL. That means I don't need all of these post dot front matter. So if I hit Command Shift L after grabbing one of those, I can just remove all those at the same time to have them just say front matter. All right, there we go. It's looking a little bit more like we want it. That means I can take the URL and add it as the href right here. So the URL, this comes directly from that glob import that I already got. Now, if I look at all the rest of these things here, the layout, I don't really need that. Title, date, author, image, these are all the same things as what I pulled in from my, my header itself. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this pre because I don't need that anymore. And then let's come down here and change a couple other things. Now, just below the link, the anchor tag, I want to add another div with a class of content like this. And then I want to take all of this and move it inside. Now, we've got a couple things to think about here. This is an H1 tag. I don't need more than one H1 tag on the page. And I should have something on my blog page that would be an H1 tag. So each of these might be H2 tags, for instance. But I might also want this somewhere else where it might be an H3 tag. So I want to actually make this tag dynamic. How do you do that? Well, there is a way to do that. If I come up top here, what I'm going to do is pass in another prop here. We'll just call this tag type. And I'll pass that in as like an H2 or an H3 or whatever I, I want it to be. Then I can say const tag with a capital T equals tag type. Now, this might seem a little bit weird, but basically we have to take what we're passed in and add it down here so that we can then use this as a component down below. That means I need to come over here and pass that tag type. And here I'm going to pass it in as an H2 in this case. So I'll save that. I'll come back over this way and save this. Now what I can do is I can use that tag right here. So on both of these, if I hit Command-D, I can grab both of those. I'll just type tag. Now, nothing much changed because the styling is still an H2, but if I come in here, you'll see this is now an H2 tag. And it's pulling this in dynamically from what I passed in up above. Now, because this is a card, I actually want this to be styled a little bit differently. So first of all, I'm going to change this to an H3 for styling. Then I'm going to add a link. The href itself will point to the same URL that the image pointed to because they're both pointing to the same post. And then I'll simply pass in the title here. Just below here, I'm just going to change this paragraph tag to a small tag. Now I want to wrap all of this right here inside a div. So if I hit Command Shift P and hit wrap with abbreviation, I can just type div. This will separate it off with the styling because just below this, I want to add as another child of that content class, another section that would be a paragraph. And inside here, I just want my description to show. Finally, just because this is a nice little use case and we already created our link component, it's really easy to pull in that link like this. And let me just make sure that imported up top the way I want it to. So I'll scroll up top here. Yeah, so let's put this, I guess let's do something like this. Let's do component imports. And then what I need to do is add in all the things that are required by this link that we created. Because we typed it, if I hit control and spacebar, I get all of those once again. So for my href, what do I want this to point to? Well, my URL. The text itself, I just want it to be a string. We'll say something like read post. For the style, we want this to be secondary. 
then I'm not going to pass in an icon, although if you wanted to pass in like a read icon or something like that, you could do that. Well, let me shut this down, and now you can see we get all of this nice styling. Now, the default focus states I've created on this site, you can see if I tab through it, I get this nice little banding effect. That means if I also come to the image, I get that. I don't really know that they need to like click on the image that way. I just think it's common for sighted users to click on an image to go to the post. So I want them to be able to click on either of these or this. And then obviously this would take them to the author's page. This would take them eventually to the category page. So I actually want to remove this banding here. So let's come back up top here and I'm going to add a couple of things here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the normal flow of the tab indexing. I think this is okay for accessibility. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong here. Accessibility to me is kind of a black box, and I've been on a journey the last several months to try to understand it more. So if this isn't uh, kosher, let me know. I'll go ahead and save this, and that should remove that from the tab indexing. If I move back over this way, though, to my blog index, I want to change around a couple of other things. First of all, we have to loop through all of these posts to start with. So let's go ahead and just comment this out for reference. So we've got it here. I'll come back to our all posts and uncomment this. And in this case, what I want to do is just make sure that I pass this front matter. And I want to pass this my post.front matter. I'll also pass my URL, which is just my post.url. And then finally, in this case, I want to pass a tag type. And this I'll pass as my h2. Now you could also set a default tag type if you want to. I didn't do that in this case so that you don't have to pass this in. So it'll actually have a tag no matter what. That might be even a wiser option than what I've done here. But I think for now, I'm going to leave that as is. So if I save that there, you see that these all come in. There's a little bit more styling that needs to happen. And that's based on a parent, uh, a parent container here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab all of this and hit Command-Shift-P again, wrap with abbreviation. I want a section here. And then I'll do a dot for a class and do a container. I'll go ahead and add all of that. And then inside here, I want to have an ARIA label so that it calls this out as a region. We'll say new blog posts. And then below here, since this is the main content of the page, I want this to be an H1. We'll give it a class of H1. It'll say new blog posts. Finally, I'm going to reselect this loop here, hit Command Shift P and wrap with abbreviation. And here I want this just to be a div with post container. So if I save that, now I get some more of that styling that we were hoping for. You can see all this laid out perfectly. I mentioned a couple times in this series that you've got to follow all my instructions exactly if you want it to look this way, and that's so that we don't have to mess with styling this whole project. Now, one of the dumb decisions I made was to make the postcard here, this image itself, need uh, an aria hidden equals true here, because I guess if they're not tabbing to it, I don't want them to see it either, just to focus on the content of the text. Again, this might not be good for accessibility, but it actually styles things the way I want, because I guess that's how I set this up, which is kind of dumb. All right, so there we go. Now this is actually styled the way I want it to be, and you can see that I've got all my posts coming in just as you'd expect. Now, if you're observant, you may notice that this goes from 1120, this is 1225, or 1125, 123, 129, so it's actually going in reverse. In addition to that, if I were to come in here, and let's go ahead and look at one of the posts like this. Let's take this first one and set the draft to true. Aster will not build this in the sitemap, which we'll get around to looking at in a, in a later video, but it will actually still display everywhere on your site that you're using a glob to get it. I don't know if they're planning on changing that, but at least for now, you have to actually manually filter all of these out. In addition to that, if I come in here and do like 1220 on this one, it's still going to show, and you see it shows here at the top. 1220 up here. So this is now 1220, this is 1125, so they're not in any order as far as this is concerned. They're just grabbing the first one, then the second one, then the third one, and whatever the dates are, it doesn't really matter. So in the next video, we're going to write a, a custom function that will reduce all of the stuff we're getting and actually allow us to customize how we get back data. We're going to use that custom function all throughout. Now, I mentioned at the very start that you need to have an understanding of JavaScript. This is probably the most complicated thing we're going to do with JavaScript, but I have full confidence you'll be able to follow along. Sound good? All right, let's jump into the next video.